you can believe it, it's 11 o'clock at night. We're on the Albany River system on Makokabatten Lake at Makokabatten Lodge. We're here for an unbelievable big fish adventure, fishing upstream for big walleye on fly, if you can believe it, and downstream for giant eastern brook trout. This big fish adventure starts right now on the new Fly Fisher. All right, and the best part about catching these jewels of the north is letting them go. Now that is absolutely wonderful. So amazing. That is amazing. There's a take. Oh, nice. The power, all right. The new fly fisher is supported by Wilderness North, Orvis Fly Fishing, Trout Unlimited, Rio Products, Oscar Blues Brewery, Global Rescue, Adipose Boatworks, WeatherTech Canada. This week, I visit Ontario's far north at Makokabatten Lodge. The lodge is located on the Albany River system and is one of Ontario's most renowned trophy fishing destinations. Makokabatten is an 18-mile lake that is fed by the Albany River and a highly sought-after destination by wilderness enthusiasts and anglers alike. Three targeted species in the area are brook trout, walleye, and pike. The lodge is located well beyond the reach of roads and is only accessible by float plane. Joining me as my guide is Andrew Misswace, a quiet gentleman and a great guy to be around. As we walked along the shore, we noticed the dragonflies were emerging on the rocks. This was fascinating to watch and told us the dragonfly nymphs were active in the river. Although I didn't have an actual match the hatch fly, generally a woolly bugger of the same size and color of the nymph will work nicely. In this case, either olive or brown will do. I knew there was a fish in that seam. Oh yeah, brook trout, nice. I switched up again to an olive cone-headed leech and uh, about two inches long and that seemed to have done the trick. All right, brook trout, first one of the day. First one of the trip. I'll wheel them right to you, Andrew. Sweet. Now the great thing about the brook trout of the Albany River is that they can actually get quite large. And this isn't a giant, but I'll tell you what, for the first fish of the trip, she will definitely play. <laughs> now what amazes me about these fish is that, you know, it's the middle, it's the end of June actually, beginning of July, and they never really go silver like you see in big lakes, do they? Mm -hmm. They stay beautiful. These fish are members of the char family, and they do look a little bit like Arctic char with the red spots, with the blue halos. And what's unique about it is the white leading edge on their fins. When you come up to the Albany River at Makokabatten Lodge, you get wonders just like this. All right, so here's the fly that we were using. It's got a bit of a deer hair head, and it's a long olive leech with legs. And she ate it up. That was fun. Fishing brook trout, it's all about structure. And what I'm really excited about this stretch of the Albany River is we've got the same structure for as far as I can see. Now, namely, we've got a giant boulder that's right here that has two seams coming off each side of it. In front of me is a trough. So that's three, four, five pieces of structure. We've got the hydro pillow in front, 
We've got the seam on river right, we've got the seam on river left, we've got the trough, and we've got any of the boulders that are associated with the big one. Now, what I like about it is that you can fish multiple pieces of structure in one cast. I can cast across, fish the eddy of the boulder, I can fish the seam, and I can fish the trough all in one cast. And what's great about it is that we've got the exact same thing nine more times down this stretch of river. Another one. Brook trout, brook trout. Now that was on the dangle. That was on the dangle and I gave it a, a, a short pump just before I was about to bring it in. And he must have followed it in and just whacked it. This fish came off the hydro cushion in front of this rock and just hammered this fly. Oh, that's a good one. I know the current plays a lot here on the Albany, but this one is gonna be a nice brook trout. I saw the side of it as it came up and rolled. Take your time, side pressure with, with these big ones. Remember, you're not only fighting the fish, but you're also fighting the current. And they use the current to their advantage. Always a tight line. Side pressure, go high if you need to. came off. Oh, we lost him. Lost him at the net. That was a 20 plus inch fish. That was a giant. <laughs> Just made what I was gonna. That's all right, man. They're right there. We'll get another one. We got every bit of that fish, except for the picture. Yeah. Oh well. <laughs> Makoka Batten Lodge is a full-service facility. The cabins are clean, warm, and with complete washrooms, including showers. There's also daily housekeeping service and 24-hour electricity. The main lodge has TV and free Wi-Fi. You're served breakfast and three-course delicious dinners at the main lodge. You have a choice of a box lunch for on the water or a shore lunch. The boats at Makoka Batten Lodge are sturdy 16-foot Lunds with 25 horsepower four-stroke electric start motors. Sonar, landing nets, life jackets, and safety kits are also included. In order to guarantee your chosen week, make sure you book as early as possible. Most people book before Christmas each year. The beauty of fishing a lodge like Makoka Batten is that you can do brook trout fully guided or you can go upriver and fish pike and walleye all on your own. Do it yourself to figure things out perfect. Well, what a difference a day makes. This place is uh, wet and buggy and raining and uh, totally brook trouty. We're at the bottom of this um, set of rapids here and I've made the decision to start at the bottom for a reason. I've been told with good accord that there are giant brook trout in here and if I was to hook one at the top of the rapids, I would risk having to run down the entire set so, and spooking everything in it. So we're gonna start at the bottom and we're gonna work our way up. That way, if we do get a big one midway or up top, we're not gonna ruin the rest of the day's fishing. Nice, right off that ledge. It's important when you're fishing back to actually fish it back. And it's a walleye, a walleye to start the day. Anyway, it's important that when you're fishing your fly back from the pool, that you don't just lift it out and start casting, that you actually bring it back slowly so that if there is a chaser, it looks like the, the fly might be fleeing and, uh, and it might pounce on it, just like this guy did. Golden walleye, sweet fish. In a river system, walleye, super fun. All right, let's move up. The technique I'm using is called the down and across. It's really a do nothing method. You cast across from yourself and allow the fly to sink. You then point your rod tip to the line and follow along as it swings in the current. After a couple of casts, you simply move downstream and repeat. 
you will know it when a fish strikes. The line will simply stop. When the line is finished swinging in the current, it's called the dangle. Pump the rod a couple of times. If a fish is followed many times, this action will instill a strike. The setup for this technique is simple. It's an intermediate sinking line to a 9 foot straight 3x or 8 pound test leader and then the weighted fly. The weather had improved enough to go for shore lunch. One of the true pleasures in coming to Makoka Batten Lodge is the shore lunch put on for the guests. Fresh fish caught and grilled over hot coals to create a meal like no other. Fresh fillets pan fried in a cast iron skillet take on a special flavor when cooked beside the lake from which they were taken. Fish never taste better than when cooked over a campfire and eaten while listening to the tranquil sounds of the water. tasted it. Fish. Sweet. Paid off. How fantastic is that? Switch flies. Change your tactic, change your position to let it rest. And we got ourselves a brook trout. Nice, nice, nice. Persistence is key. Come on, baby. And then switching to a really big, bold woolly bugger. You know what? Let's move this guy in a little bit. Let's move him into the, into the shallower water. Gosh, crazy, crazy fish. Oh, strong, man. I want to keep him out of those rocks. All right, I'm moving over to the shallower water so I can net him. No, 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 no. Fantastic stuff, people. You put in your hard work in less than ideal conditions and you get rewarded. It's buggy, it's wet, but the brook trout be chewing. Okay, so the fly has already popped out. We went from a natural, natural looking uh, woolly bugger, very organic colors, greens and browns, and switched it to something big, heavy, gaudy. That's what did it. Let's see if I can show you this beautiful brookie. Fantastic fish of the Albany River. Look how fat he is. There's been a hatch that's been going off as we've talked about and the dragonflies and the mayflies have been going crazy. So the fishing's been tough, but you know what? We had a hit. I'm not sure this is the same fish, but we had a hit. We let it rest. We changed flies. We reapproached, and we were succeeded and rewarded. All right, and the best part about catching these jewels of the north is letting them go. Now that is absolutely wonderful. So amazing. Well, 
It's about 8.30 in the morning. We've pulled into the inflow of Makokabatten Lake of the Albany River, and we're actually gonna target walleye on fly today. I know people think that walleye are boring, but I'm here to prove you wrong. It's gonna be fast action walleye. It's early morning, should be on fire. All right, so cast it out, let it sink on a full sinking line and a slow retrieve back. We're in about 12 feet of water, 14 feet of water. Fish. All right, got one. All right, first walleye of the day. Oh, it's a good one too. Nice. Sweet. Now, Makoka Batten Lodge is known, very well known, for their large walleye. And I'm talking consistently 24 inch plus. This is not a 24 inch walleye, but this is the beginning of the day. And they are fantastic, fantastic fish. And readily catchable on fly, which is amazing. People think that walleye are generally really boring to catch. Not when you catch them on black leech patterns. Super fun. See you, dude. That was fun. Let's do that again. The equipment used on this episode were for trout nine foot number five and number six weight rods with matching reels. A smooth drag is also desirable due to the size of the fish and the fast current of the river. A double whammy when fighting big fish and heavy current of the Albany River. For walleye, I used a nine foot eight weight rod with matching reel. The walleye can be immense in this area. The setup for walleye was a little different than for trout. I used a full sinking line this time with a four foot 12 pound leader and then to the fly. I needed to get to the bottom or as close as I could, as fast as I could. And this, for the most part, is where the walleye feed. Down and dirty. Oh, it is a good one. That's a great walleye on fly, let me tell you. Oh, I need the net on this one. Oh, it's a great fish. Look at that. Come on. All right, look at this. Oh, this is a good one. Mm. Now that is a fantastic Makokabatten Lodge walleye on fly. Good fish. Let's get a measurement on them. We'll let them go. 22 and a half inches. 22 inches. That's a good one. And you get to go back. Good fish. There he goes. <laughs> 22 inch walleye. Let me show you the fly that we're using. It's about a two and a half inch black leech pattern. It's got a big bushy head on it. Um, almost like a, a big muddler minnow head. Um, and that's good, man. Been here a short period of time, it's already catching walleye. Let's go back up and hit it again. Well, some friends of ours that are fishing conventional just drifted by us and said that the walleye, even though we've been having a fantastic day, that these walleye are nailing pink uh, twister tails. I don't have anything pink in my box. But I do have a cone-headed purple bunny leech. And we're gonna see if that do some, have some fun with some walleye here. Oh, 
Oh, that's a big one. I thought it was snagged on bottom. That's crazy. Maybe it's a log. A piece of wood, it's not fighting. Oh no, it's another good walleye. All right. Quality fish just before lunch. Oh, they dig down. Oh. Now I've got 12 pound leader on here and he's fighting every minute of it. Woo. Oh, that's the biggest one of the day. Look at that. High noon, big Makoka Batten Lake walleye. Look at that. He swiped at it and missed it. I got him just. Right there. Oh, that's fantastic. Look at that. See, I say it's 21 again. Nope, another 22. Not bad, cookie cutter 21s and 22s all day long here, huh? That is amazing. But it's too big, it's gotta go back. Now there are master angler walleye in here and I believe that those are walleye over 26 inches, 26 or 26 over. And I don't know if this one is one, but man, do they ever fight. We've had some great success today with all of our fish except for one over 20. Or their big one so far 22. Krista Cheeseman, the owner at Makoka Batten Lodge said that there are a lot of master angler walleye here. I would love to see one, really would. Another good one, 23, 24 maybe, 22, and back down to the deep. And what's funny is that we haven't caught any pike here today at all, and usually there's big northerns, but you know what, look at the size of these walleye. There's a reason why they're not here is because there's nothing to eat, because they're all huge. Ooh, that's a good one. Makoka Batten Lodge asks is that yeah, any fish over 18 inches goes back into the water. Uh, even though regulation states you can't keep one over, um, they ask that you don't, that you take a photograph, get a repl replica done, and you can eat the little ones under 18. But this is definitely one that's bigger than 18 inches. Great fish. Let's take a measurement on it and see how long it is. 21 inches. All right, buddy, away you go. The flies used on this episode were not fancy. Simple woolly buggers for 98% of the fish taken. I used black, olive, brown, and I took a particularly large walleye on a purple strip leech. I also had an exciting hookup on a black stone fly. All flies were weighted to ensure they sank to the bottom. Should be slow drifting a woolly bugger. Oh, fish, big brook trip. Wow. Oh my goodness, that was absolutely nuts. Big brook trip. I just switched over to a woolly bugger under an indicator. And uh, oh, he came off. Just switched over to a woolly bugger under an indicator and I put it down to get ready to cast and this brook came out and ate it right away. And he took my woolly bugger, damn it. 
He rubbed against that rock, eh? Yeah. Wow, that was a giant fish. Well, solved the issue. Now we know what we're doing right and what we're doing wrong. So what I'm doing here in this deeper part of this river section is I'm casting it out and I'm keeping my line tight to the fly and I'm basically just letting it dead drift down. These fish are coming off a massive mayfly hatch and a dragonfly hatch and they're not probably all that hungry so they're not going to expend a lot of energy to chase down a fly. Fish. Nice. And it is a brook trout. All right. Woo! Strong fish. Now he's freaking out because I'm standing in the shallow water and he doesn't want to come in there. I saw this deep hole we were, as we were bringing the boat down. Whoa. I ruined it when I went through with the boat, spooked everything out. I made a mental note that when I'm coming back, put on a woolly bugger and uh, see if there's anybody home. And sure enough, second cast, we got lucky. Look at that. How's that for a July fish? Not too shabby if you ask me. They're beautifully colored up for this time of year. Look at the orange on its belly. And those spots with the blue halos on them are unmistakable. That's what makes these fish so absolutely special to me. One of the things to remind, remember when you're fishing river for brook trout, especially when the water's a little bit warm as it is today is you want to let them go in an eddy. So we're right in front of a rock and I'll let this fish go and he's not any worse for wear. Now, the beautiful thing about this is that we've got this entire folder garden in front of us. This is going to make out for an absolutely awesome afternoon. So here's the fly I was using. It's a brown bead-headed woolly bugger with a, uh, um, a bunch of green marabou, green flash in it and uh, looks kind of like a crayfish, I would say. Uh, you know, we, we did see some dead crayfish on the shoreline earlier, um, and yeah, seems to have done the ticket. I'm impressed, I'm gonna keep using it. Check my leader, get rid of that tag, and hit it again. I don't have much of a back cast where I'm standing here. So what I'm doing is at the end of my swing through with this woolly bugger, I'm actually using the line on the water to load the rod and to be able to punch it forward so I don't need a back cast. Just like, never mind, I got a brook trip. Oh, and it's a big one. Oh, it's a giant. We're gonna go chasing this one. Oh, what a big fish. Now, I will be very lucky if I get to land this. Very lucky. Now, you have to be very careful here. This is big water. Big water. You fall and hit your head. You could be in some serious, serious trouble. Oh, what a fish. What a fish. Come on, baby. Oh, what a big brook trout. Get him, get him! Oh, get him! Give me that. Ooh, that was a big one. That was probably a six pound brook trout. I knew he was barely hooked in the lip. He got in the net, and then we lost him. Yeah. <sighs> what a crazy, crazy, crazy week. I cannot believe the luck we've had with big brook trout here on the Albany River at Makoka Batten Lodge. I'm gonna take this opportunity to thank Alan and Krista Cheeseman, as well as Andrew Misswaste, for all of their hospitality 
and expert guiding. It is an absolutely phenomenal fishery. And as you can see, sometimes it's very technical. Remember, adventure is out there. What better way than to go and find it than with a fly rod in your hand. For everybody at the new fly fisher, my name is Mark Melnick. What can I say? Just get beaten up. <laughs> we'll see you in the backcountry, everybody. <laughs> The new Fly Fisher is supported by Wilderness North, Orbis Fly Fishing, Trout Unlimited, Rio Products, Oscar Blues Brewery, Global Rescue, Adipose Boatworks, WeatherTech Canada. <laughs>